This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Kickstart summer at Lowe's with Memorial Day savings on major appliances like the Smart Whirlpool Top Load Washer featuring the two-in-one removable agitator and a color you'll only find at Lowe's. Take it out for bulky items, leave it in for a more thorough clean. You can customize any load, plus skip steps with the load-and-go dispenser. Simply add detergent once and skip the refills. Memorial Day savings start now at Lowe's. Shop in-store or online today. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. KISW presents the KISW Financial Advisor. Here to talk money, please welcome Todd. I invented numbers so I know how this stuff works. Peach. That's right, man. Todd Peach, over 25 years doing stuff with the money and working for BECU, which is a great credit union. And uh, if you bank and you've never banked with a credit union before, they are very, very different. And uh, Todd, why is it that a credit union, and especially a place like BECU, is different than an ordinary bank? Uh, the, the, the main difference is, BJ, we're a non, not-for-profit. We're owned by the membership. So all of our decisions are based on what's best for the member and the membership, not how can we make the most money because – we don't have stockholders. Our stockholders are the members. And yet I can do anything I, a, a regular bank can give me, you know, the, the ATMs, all that sort of stuff, to writing checks, all that cool stuff I can do at BECU just like a regular bank. Yeah, absolutely. And and with COVID, I mean, there's, I mean, there are some good things that came out of COVID. And I think one of them is that people realize that they don't need to go into a branch. They can, they can use their phone to make a deposit. Mm-hmm. They can transfer money and, and mobile banking just skyrocketed and um yeah there's you can do everything we have access to over 30 some thousand atms throughout the country not just here in the puget sound but wherever you may be going uh, surcharge free so if you haven't checked out a credit union um, please do so whether it's becu or anybody else and if you want to join BECU, all you got to do is live, work, or attend school here in Washington State. Just go to BECU.org. Let's talk to Rich. Rich has got a question. Rich, you are on The Rock with Todd Peach from BECU. Go ahead, Rich. Hold on. We got hey, him. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, Rich. Good morning. My credit uh, or my question is about credit card usage. Which raises your, your credit score faster? Carrying no balance because it sure is nice to see payment due, zero due. Or to use it, pay it off on a due date, or keep a small balance? Uh, great question, Rich. That's A myth is that you have to carry a balance. You don't have to carry a balance. Um, your, your credit score is comprised of five things. Um, number one, paying on time is 35%. Um, so just just paying paying your bills on time, whether you have a balance or not, um, is, is 35% of it. Um, the other 30% is called utilization. Um, and that's your cre- your balance relative to your credit limit. So let's just, for example, say you have a thousand dollar credit limit. Um, you want to keep that balance, if possible, when you get that statement every month under ten dollars or a hundred dollars. Excuse me, ten uh, percent, um, if possible, no more than thirty percent. So on that one thousand dollar example, no more than three hundred dollars when you get that statement that's showing up there but preferably under $100. If you do those two things, um, time will take care of itself. You don't need to have five, six, eight credit cards. Uh, A couple will do. Um, If you happen to have an auto loan, that's fine. Um, Home loan, good. that's actually a good thing. 
Um, so I would say that the number two things you can do, don't have to pay any interest. It's okay if you have a little bit of balance when you get that statement, if you pay it off every month. Um, but just keep that balance below 10%. Make your payments every month on everything, and you should be good to go. Nice. Very, very cool. Uh, Todd, I've got I've got a question because I just heard recently that there's going to be a new tax put on all of us, uh, a payroll tax to, to help pay for long term disability. And I heard that uh, if you don't opt out right away, even if you have your own long term disability later on, you take care of yourself and you get your own insurance, you still got to pay this tax. Uh, have you heard anything about that? Um, I have, and I'm still doing a little bit of research on that, BJ. Actually, but um, my understanding is I think we have. Uh, I do believe you can apply through the state to get a waiver of that if you already have long-term care um, insurance. Um, I am actually looking into um, what products might be out there because it's it's like 58 basis points. So um, on a hundred thousand dollar salary, five hundred eighty dollars a year, you're going to pay in in taxes, give or take. Um, so what I, you know, we can talk about this in the future, and I can look into it. But I'm going to look into are there options out there that have an insurance product with long-term care that would be a cheaper option um, that might make sense. Because you have to pay into this for five years, I believe, um, before you'll even be eligible for the benefit. Um, and it might make sense for folks to, to go ahead and do that. But if you already have long-term care, yes, you can apply um, through the state. You're going to have to do that, I believe, by the end of the year, have it all set and done. I wouldn't wait that long. Um, and then you have to let your employer know so they don't take that tax out. But there are there are ways around that if you already have long term care. And again, I'm researching into uh, options to not not necessarily get long term care um, because that's very expensive. Um, but are there options that that have a long term care option uh, attached to it that might be cheaper? And I don't have the answer, but but I will soon. Yeah, you know, Ty, I, you'll give us more information. The one thing that really bothered me was is that, like, young people, you know, if you're in your 20s and 30s, you don't really need long-term care. You don't need to think yeah. about it. And yet, yeah. if you don't make the decision by November to opt out, you can never opt out, which I, at least that's what I heard this was going to be, which really does suck because, like you said, you know, there's just extra money that the government's taking out of us here in Washington State, and it's for something that a lot of people don't need, but they're going to have to pay taxes anyway because they'll be like, well, I'm not going to get long-term care. I don't need it. But so now you're telling me even if I end up getting my own long-term care, it doesn't matter. I'm going to have to pay this tax for the rest of my Washingtonian life. That's what I yeah. want to find out if that's true, Todd. Yeah, and, and and I believe it is, and I'll find the, I'll find the answer out for you that too, BJ, but I believe it is. And, and if you um, – and the benefits are capped at, I believe, like 36000 lifetime. So Which is ridiculous. You could be paying in for some years and then you're only going to get 36000 over your life if you even needed it, right? I mean, that that's that's you know that's the thing is you may see, not it's even a, need yeah. it. Yeah, it's a, it's a nickel and dime thing, Todd, because like you said, oh, it's only 500 bucks a year for someone that makes 100000 So if somebody's making 30000 40000 a year, they'll be like, is it worth my trouble to go fight this? But it's just another way the government is taking money out of you. I, I really, when I heard this, it pissed me off. It's just like, man, you know, this is, I mean, this is not what government needs to be doing. It's just like screwing over a lot of younger people, for, and, and there's not much anyone's going to do about it. Yeah. Right, we, got, we got a text message. Someone wanted, to, someone wanted to know, okay. is it better to co-sign a loan for my kid who doesn't have high credit score because of a lack of credit, or should I let him do it his own at a higher rate so his credit, core, credit score could get bigger? Um, I, I, I mean, I can tell you what I personally did, and um, I did co-sign the, the loan with my daughters, both of them. Actually, what we did is we, when they were 18, we got a credit card with a small balance, uh, with a small credit, excuse me, um, and I co-signed it, and I had it within my online banking as well as theirs, so I could monitor it, and then we would talk about how it worked and and uh, spending and so forth. And when they were a couple years later, they were, they had a great credit score and they were able to get a card on their own. So I, if you, you know, it depends on the relationship you have with your child, but I'm all for co-signing, helping my child get off to a great start, um, helping them build credit and teaching them along the way. So if they, if they make a mistake, okay, let's, it's okay. If it's just, they're going to learn early, make small mistakes. Um, so they don't make that later on. Um, then when they are in the, when they're 22, 23, whatever, they're going to have a great credit score. Uh, they're going to be able to qualify for, um, you know, to rent a place or, or, or an auto loan on their own. So I have no problem co-signing. Um, I, but again, I would, 
uh, work with your child and, and monitor it with them, and it should be in good shape. 206-421-ROCK, Texas at 77999. Talking to Todd Peach from BECU.org. And uh, if you don't get through on the text lines or the phone lines, you can always email Todd. He has always been willing, in the many years we've had this relationship with him, Todd is willing to answer any question you have. Just go to KISW.com, scroll down, and you'll see Tom's, uh, Todd's smiling face, and then you'll be able to give him an email. Uh, Aaron from uh, Everett just texted in saying, we just recently refied our house down to a 15-year loan, but our payment went from 2800 to three thousand dollars is this a good financial decision absolutely yeah, yeah. i mean you, you just took you took a 30-year loan down to 15 and you're only paying 200 dollars more a month so That's awesome. uh, i love that um yeah and now you got that plan in place so 15 years you're going to own the own it let's let's take a look at what what are your other goals how's retirement looking do you have saving for kids for for college or you know what are your other goals and so let, let, let's keep cool. the uh, home on autopilot. We'll have that paid off in 15 years, and now let's focus on your other goals. I think the next goal is to get a pool in their backyard. That's it. Todd, on average, I mean, we know we have to have an emergency fund. On average, Todd, I mean, just, you know, I, I, do you think the, that, that it's better to just, if you have extra money, to pay the principal of the house, you know, pay more money than you're supposed to a month so you can really pay less interest? Or is it better to save for your retirement? Which, which interest rate seems to be the better one to knock down or to keep growing? I, I I am all for letting the house go on autopilot. It's great. And now let's focus on building my other assets because um, if you invest in the stock market over the long term, um, you're gonna you're gonna make eight eight ish percent. That's what history is gonna tell us eight eight or ten percent. And your mortgage is gonna be interest rate is much lower than that. Um, and potentially, depending on your tax situation, some of that interest is deductible. But um, I'm all for like let's let's make sure we're on t- track for retirement and our, and our other goals. Uh, obviously, having an emergency fund is number one. Um, but but I'm all for letting the mortgage take care of itself and let's build uh, all my other assets. Even if we're investing outside of a retirement account, you should be able to do better long term from a return than you're going to get um, on the interest you're paying on the mortgage. Well, we are out of time with Todd, but again, all you got to do is go to KISW.com and uh, just uh, scroll down to see the banner, and Todd will answer any email question that you have. And don't forget, man, uh, BEC is a great place to do some banking, and all you got to do is live, work, worship, attend school here in Washington State, and you can be a part of BECU. Go to BECU.org. Todd, good talking to you, buddy. You too, BJ. Thanks. We got a guy named Macaroni who just had a kid, and yeah. He gave his kid an even dumber name than Macaroni. I'll tell you what he named his son at 817 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Make your kitchen ready for every summer gathering this Memorial Day with LG and Lowe's. Our exclusive InstaView appliance suite includes ranges with air fry, refrigerators with slow melting craft ice, and an exclusive dishwasher you can only find at Lowe's. Plus, you'll get up to 10% back via a MasterCard prepaid card when you bundle eligible LG products via rebate. Shop Memorial Day savings at Lowe's. Offer valid 3 3 through 5 18 on select LG items only. See Lowe's.com slash rebates for details and timing. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There's a woman in the Philippines, and she just had a baby boy. And the dad got her to agree to name the kid Hypertext Markup Language, which, of course, is what HTML stands for. Oh, well, that's not weird. No, not at all. I mean, his nickname would be Hype. What's up? It's Hype. Yeah. Oh, What's that's up, actually hype? cool, yeah. He's a web developer, loves his job, so that's one of the reasons that they did it. Uh, well, but I love also, working on the radio. I'm not going to name my kid uh, Record Scratch or something. I don't know. <laughs> wow. You know what? I think you need to give more thought to the dumb name you want to name your kid, okay? Come on. Yeah, really, that's right. That's actually a cool this. name. You're right. Uh, I'm going to name my kid On Air. Uh, well, his Production you don't have, studio. Yeah, <laughs> mixing yeah, really. board. Yeah. yeah. Microphone. Okay. Well, Mike. Okay, oh, Mike, um, that's adorable. Yeah. Oh, hey, Mikey. Hey. 
Uh, now, look, here's the thing. You don't have a long history of weird names in your family, but I guess, but he does. Okay. His name is Mac, but it stands for Macaroni85, which is his full name. Uh, I, okay, the name Macaroni is weird, but I don't know why, but Macaroni85 makes it even weirder. Like, what, what, there's something special that happened in 1985? Maybe that's his birth year. His birth year, okay. Uh, that's all I'm thinking of, because uh, he's got a sister whose legal name is Spaghetti88. Oh, I bet you're right. So Macaroni and Spaghetti. That, those are the names of the kids. That's what uh, their family named. Uh, wow. So you can't, I mean, the apple doesn't fall too far from the macaroni tree. You can understand why. <laughs> the macaroni tree. <laughs> uh, too bad I'm another brother like named Noodle and another one like named Elbow Noodle. So I Probably. Know. I mean, you got a lot of pasta you can throw in there. A ton you of know, pasta. shells. One text hey, shells, a good point. You should have named this kid Cheese. That way it's macaroni and cheese. Aww. Yeah. That would be That cute. would work. Yeah. So there you go, HTML. So do you, and uh, do you think yeah. the parents? Because like, so he picked HTML because he loves his job. So do you right. think his parents had the same rationale, but maybe like loved mac macaroni and loved spaghetti. It is look, macaroni and spaghetti is delicious. So I can understand having a passion for that. But well, yeah, were they in the business? Was he a restaurateur? These are these are questions I need to know. Right? Because I mean, Danny, you have another kid. And you name it pizza. Yeah, why not? Oh, pizza. Oh, pizza. Pizza yeah. pie. Oh, uh, you miss it. You get any other little kid named Slice. You know? <laughs> that would actually be cool. We and then your favorite. Our, what's that? The favorite would be Pineapple. Of pineapple. Oh, no, Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, a little pineapple. Out. It's the black sheep of the family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we name our yeah. kid Avocado Roll then. Aww. Yeah. That way it works both for my wife and I because we both like sushi, but clearly I like stuff with fish on it, but she does. It would be a little challenging for my kids because if I were to name them after my favorite pizza place and what I love at my favorite pizza place, of course the kids would. Have no name. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hypertext markup language. I didn't even know that's what yeah. HTML stood for. See that? This kid's going to teach you every time he says hello. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I look forward to the day when he finally understands what his name is and how he reacts to it. I guess if, you, if that's all you know, that's all you know. But the, the people in his life are going to probably like his friends and schoolmates are going to give him a hard time for this name. But you know what? I mean, yeah, except he could call himself High. I've known Highs, a lot of Highs over the years. Highs? Oh, yeah, H-Y. It's short for Jaime. So, I mean, but I've known some Highs. I've, n I've never met a person that went by High. Same. Oh, really? Hi, Hi. Oh, yeah. Bye, Hi. <laughs> Apparently, the sister whose name's Spaghetti, she has two kids, Cheese Pimento and Parmesan Jeez, Cheese. My God, this no, they did not awesome. do this. given nicknames are Chippy and Pewee. The, this family is wow. amazing. I want to party with this family. This family knows how to do it. And they also have cousins named Design and Research. Oh. So this is all the same family. They're, I mean, they've just, they've gone all in on this. Might as well. Wow. How did wow. it even start, though? At some point, somebody had Chuck as their name, or Bob, you would think. <laughs> and at some point, they were like, you know what? I'm flipping the script. This kid's going to be named Pimento Cheese. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where it started. That's a really good question. I wonder if it started with his parents' generation, and then, of course, all the you know the brothers and sisters of that family all went all in on this. Because, I don't know. That's a good question. That's uh, we know it started with the dad at least. Oh, so be a good point, though. If this person, if this kid becomes a liar, then everyone could be like, "Hey, don't believe the hype." Lol. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, there you go. That's a good one. <laughs> nice. Someone said, if you have two kids, name one peanut butter and the other one jelly. Then it's always yeah. peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly Where time. Where are you at? I like that. Where are you at? Where you at, yeah. peanut butter jelly? I always wanted to go like the nerdier route. And if I had two boys, like twin boys, I'd name one Peter and the other one Parker. So when you yell out, Peter, Parker. I like that. Yeah, Bruce that's good. Wayne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, but then Steve would come running because he would think you're calling his old band. Like, no, we're not together want? anymore. What do you Aww. want? Stop asking. <laughs> yeah, stop it. I told you, we're not getting back together, Vic. Stop calling us. Uh, uh, one texture said if you're going with uh, like naming your kid after your job and what you love to do with radio, you can name your kid Dump Button. Dump Button. That's uh, wow. Awesome. Hey, good old yeah. Dump. Little Dumpy. Yeah. Come here, Dumpy. DB, what's up? <laughs> what's up, DB? <laughs> good old Dump Button. <laughs> Dumpy I'm going to play all this for my wife. That way she'll think, because when we were trying to talk about if we have a kid, what we need, we're going to go with. I didn't have any ideas for a girl, but for a boy, I really wanted Thurman. And she was just like really opposed to that. Is and that for Thurman Munson or Thurman Merman? Thurman, Thurman Merman. Munson. Okay. <laughs> Not Thurman Merman. <laughs> Thurman Munson. <laughs> that's the problem. Only The only people who know Thurman are the kid from Bad Santa. Yeah. And that's just not a, 
not a label you want to throw on the poor bastard. He kind of screwed building. up the Thurman name, didn't he? Sure did. Yeah, I he was sure thinking did. Uma Thurman. So Uma Thurman. Go. Oh, we're back. Okay, no, right. that's a positive. Then we can name the, if we had a boy and a girl, one Uma and the other one Thurman. Yeah. Oh, that would have been great. She'd probably retweet it. It'd be worth it just for that, right? <laughs> yeah. Get a couple she of probably social media would likes. She would retweet it and probably look very disturbed while you're doing it. <laughs> but she would probably do that. She's like, what's wrong with this guy? He named me, his daughter and son after me. Nah, yeah. she has a, she has a song name after her too. It's the Fall Out Boy song. So at yeah. that point, or the lyrics at least. At that point, she'd be like, "Oh, maybe they're just a big Fall Out Boy fan." But how would you feel? Like, I mean, would it, would it make you? Would you feel honored or weirded out if someone like was such a fan of you that they decided to, that they're they're naming their kids? They have twins, boy and a girl. Boy's named Danny. Girl's name is V. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean, is it more weird than macaroni and and spaghetti? No, I'm not saying weird for the per. I'm just saying weird for the celebrity yeah. or like the person yeah. that is the the target of this tribute. I mean, I don't know if that's a, that's just like wow, that's cool, but kind of weird if you're naming your kids after me. I would say your like right first team. and last name. I'm not saying like first name or whatever, but like if you like made it a point so that your two kids are the full name of a celebrity, that would be weird. Yeah, but I, I would say after uh, Elon Musk's kid and after uh, Penn Jillette's kid, I, I you know I think as a celebrity go well at least you know B J and Shay are names. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? The kids the kids won't be looked at weird in school when they go. Your name is Moxie Fruvis Crime Fighter. Okay, uh, though that is a cool name. <laughs> now that I think about it, I think I'd want to be Moxie Fruvis Crime Fighter. Never mind, I take it back. That's I, I want that name, man. Our text line's rather interesting right now, BJ. What's going on? I what feel like somebody's having an argument with their uh, uh, significant other, and they're texting us. <laughs> oh, oh boy! Oh, they they hit the wrong recipient. Yelling at us about how, what have you done to help someone? Oh, uh, yeah. It's oh always boy. funny, and I always I look forward to though when at some point you get the text back that just says, "My bad, I meant this for somebody else." Yeah, yeah right. Even. I think you should reply back and say, and say everything you've done for that someone. You would think they know that they're getting like the automated text response back that says, hey, thanks for texting the show. You know, there's that automatic thing. Oh, yeah. Now, now, now they're embarrassed. If they got that back, now they're really embarrassed because they know they sent it to us. Because I feel like almost every morning we do get like a off to work, baby. Love you. And I always write, love you too. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know, I don't want to leave them hanging. Yeah, but of course. One, I mean, they want to know. Should we, and this one would be like, should we fight back with them? Like, yeah. What have you done for your little Yeah. Brother? You know what? I did A, B, and C. You've come up with some really elaborate things you've done. Like right. I painted the kitchen just five minutes ago. What have you done? You're not I reinstalled all the toilets. You're a, just a disrespectful bitch, I tell oh, you. Oh, whoa. <laughs> hey, Steve. What? Say, you know what? When I get home, I'm going to cut your foot off. That's a good one. That's the one. P.S. Love you. Yeah. We got a, uh, a woman on TikTok who's going viral after showing people how to get butter on all of your movie theater popcorn, not just the top layer. What? This is pretty epic. I people like, say, like I squirt the top, shake a little if I can without losing any of the precious popcorn. And then I also go for like the edges. And I feel like it works its way down that way. That's how I do it. Yeah, she's got a pretty awesome way. This is if you get to put your own butter on yourself. Sometimes they don't let you. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, usually I don't get to. Oh, yeah, a lot of the theaters I've been to before the pandemic, like even like the one right downtown, um, they had like the little squirter. You hit the button and it squirts it out for you. <laughs> oh, that. Oh, I wasn't sure what you were talking about. I love that thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, squirter. she says, take a straw, shove one end down into the popcorn, and then you line it up with a butter dispenser. And then, of course, the liquid goes all the way down the straw and into the bottom of the bucket. And then also you can just take the straw and put it in different places around the popcorn, different levels, and you get all these pockets of butter, dude. And then use that straw, pop it in your drink, and you have a buttery cola. Yum. Oh, gross. A buttery cola sounds like something on the Urban Dictionary. Would you like a buttery cola? No, I don't. I'm only give that. That's actually not a bad idea, though. Like to be it's able, a but, great idea. But like, I don't want to. I love butter on my popcorn, but I don't want to go too crazy because obviously it's not like like that pop that butter is. I can't imagine like the healthiest thing to add to already an unhealthy tub of popcorn. Wait, wait, wait. Are you, are you actually thinking health and popcorn at the movie theater? I'm and thinking those moderate two health. I, I know that I'm I'm going off the deep end, but how oh, far yeah, off are. the deep end do I really want to? Oh, go? you got to go all the way, brother. And, and I mean, put a is- straw on my popcorn and just. Cake the bottom of my bucket with yeah. p- butter. I feel like you should just go one step further and get an extra cup, fill that with butter oil, and drink it. 
Oh. oh, I thought you could say extra cup filled with butter, and then during the movie, just kind of pour a little bit okay, in there. That's right? what I was thinking. I mean, no, Vicky's taking, out, Vicky's taking out the middleman. Yeah. <laughs> butter chugger. <laughs> butter chugger. Ew. That was her nickname in high school, oddly enough. <laughs> yes, it was. Don't Urban Dictionary the, that. But yeah. the, the, you can even, like, uh, some, I remember when I was like, I love popcorn and butter on it so much, like when they had the butter on the other side of the fence, when the, the cashier would do it, you'd be like, hey, can you layer the popcorn, the butter in there? Yeah. And yeah. so they'd fill up like halfway. Then do a little bit of the butter swirl and then fill up the rest of the popcorn. That's right. Now you straw it in there. Dude, these food hack things, man. Like yesterday we came across one that was like blew my mind. So somebody on video I like, posted like, you know how like when you open up an avocado yeah. and you have to take a knife and you just like kind of stab the pit and then you pull it out that way? Mm-hmm. Apparently, if you just kind of like treat like the avocado like a baseball like you cut it in half and then you kind of put two fingers around the pit and then you thumb around the back where the the, the skin is still and you just give it a little push the the pit just pops out no problem oh really really yeah. and i was like that's crazy i showed it to my wife and she's like oh that's funny i'm actually about to cut open an avocado and she tried it sure as that it worked no problem I'm wow like, oh, all my life i didn't know this Same. So I, 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 yeah. close to slicing my hand off oh yeah. geez yeah right because you get and, a little uh, aggressive with the knife and do you throw like a curveball or something with a pit? Yes. You're like, Greg, oh, that, that's nice. <laughs> you already got a grip ready to go. It was on Facebook. Someone shared it. I was just like, that's crazy. It was just like something so stupid, but it works so easily. And how is it we, again, again, maybe because video is just so accessible, because you think these are things that people have known for years. Right. Who's been keeping this from us? And yeah. why do they suck? I'll tell you who. Old wives. Oh, because they're old wives' tales. Exactly. <laughs> they don't have any tales if they tell them to everybody. Uh, see that? So that's the the old wives are pissed about the Facebooks, aren't they? Yeah, I'd show you, but Facebook's being a biatch. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, every day. Yeah, yeah. You know what the problem is? Roger Waters <laughs> <laughs> took a shot at Zuckerberg, and ever since then, Facebook's been falling apart. Oh, uh, that's what's yeah. There you go. Roger Waters exposed him, and Zuckerberg goes, "Okay, you think I'm an idiot? Try this." And he turned on the shut off Facebook switch, and now look at what it's doing. <laughs> Yesterday, Steve he got this one wrong. What is the pure spirit distilled from wine? Uh, uh, vodka. No. Sangria. No. Uh, uh, man. Man? Man. No. Not yeah. man. I was afraid what the next word was going to be. I'm yeah. glad you stopped. Yeah. I didn't stop. If you he didn't stop. Enough. Did you say mangina? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I, I didn't hear I, that. I oh, didn't okay. hear that the first time either. I did. Oh, wow. I, okay. I did say that, and I just let it kind of just, yeah. I didn't bring it up again. Well, I thought he was going <laughs> to say another word that began with J, so I'm kind of glad that it was just mangina. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to go with mangria, but I was like, yeah. it's, if it's not sangria, it's not mangria. So then I tried another. Mangria. Manly sangria, everybody. Yeah, I think that would be a great drink. It well, is. How do you make a mangria? I, I love that. Yeah, well, the correct answer we were looking for was brandy. Um, yeah. Not mangina. <laughs> uh, you want a shot at beating Steve, you got it. 206 421 Rock. We're going to play Beat Migs at 848 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. I owe a lot of back taxes. Can bankruptcy help me? Bankruptcy can discharge back taxes under certain circumstances. Some types of taxes are never dischargeable, like if you have taxes from an employee, if you ran a business and didn't pay employee taxes or sales taxes, those types of taxes cannot be discharged in bankruptcy. However, most people don't have those kind of taxes. Most people have just regular income taxes. If you owe income taxes and you filed your tax returns but just weren't able to pay the taxes, if the taxes are more than three years old and you filed the tax tax returns, those types of taxes can be discharged in bankruptcy uh, in most circumstances, especially through a Chapter 13 case. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org.